Hey guys, so hey, uh, this is my 500 subscriber video. I really want to thank you guys. I can't believe we've gotten like this big over the last couple weeks. Um, so today we're doing a uh, requested video. It's been requested since I started the channel. We're going to do a game room tour. So before we go into the full room, I just kind of want to show you, this is my, my setup, what you see here, this is how I film everything. So I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I play like a whole lot of instruments, um, in fact all the music on the channel, some of the, um, the more uh, digitized stuff is made by a good friend of mine, but all of like the rock and metal music stuff is stuff I recorded. So I use a drum stool for, for just kind of sitting here, and I got this ring light, and believe it or not, I actually use a phone to film everything, except for this video, ironically. And uh, on this chair here, I have my mic, and also when I do unboxings, I have this stand where I can put my camera down. So this is kind of the behind the scenes of how I film everything, but I'm going to now get rid of all this and actually show you the game room itself proper. So we're just going to walk into my game room and kind of like show you as if you were visiting what you'd be expecting. So the first thing you're going to come up to is a, is a closet right here, and I'm kind of glad we're getting this closet out of the way because it's kind of lame. <laughs> This is the closet of boxes. Just all of like the boxes and things for stuff I have on my shelves are kind of in there. But also this is where I keep all my guitars, my big set of pedals, both my amps. Uh, this is my modeling amp that I record a bunch of stuff on. Um, trade bait for conventions. This is just a Wii that actually I picked up at a yard sale that um, for a friend of mine for 15 bucks. I'm just kind of holding on to it for him. Uh, the other stuff I have in here, you know, some a saxophone, a mandolin that I've been working on. Of course my jackets, and if you've been watching my channel, you should recognize this guy. It's a classic. But uh, the only other thing in here is uh, really this, this small uh, CRT TV that I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but um, this is, this is kind of the overflow room. And uh, it's just kind of where I put a lot of stuff that I don't have a good spot for or really doesn't need to be in the game room per se. So another thing uh, you'll notice in my game room, I love hanging stuff on my walls. I have a lot of posters, a lot of framed things. I like this is like this poster my wife got me, which is the uh, the Nebula of NES games, which actually has every game for the NES in in order by genre being the color and then like the year. Um, over here, I have a, <laughs> it's like a fan art poster uh, from Mega Man Battle Network, which is one of my favorite series. Is I don't know if I've said that enough. There's every character from Battle Network, and they've even thrown in some Star Force characters, which I thought was really cool. But one thing I really want to show off are these two shadow boxes. They actually came, I bought them at a convention. Uh, they're from a, um, a company called Video Game Shadow Box. Uh, actually, the guy's website is videogameshadowbox.com. But these are cool, because starting last year, he added these AR codes. And uh, I'm going to show you what these guys do real quick, because it is an awesome thing to see. All right, so like I said, these shadow boxes are really cool. So using the Zap AR app, they actually have it to where the scene is fully animated. You can use it with Android or iPhone. So I have this one for obviously Earthbound with Ness walk around the town in the beginning with the music. And uh, <laughs> I have one more that I'll show you as well. So this is the other one I have. It's the uh, resting scene from uh, Chrono Trigger. This is kind of cool. This one's actually pretty long, so we're not going to watch the whole thing. But I just really like the attention to detail these guys made when they made these. Because I saw them the year before, and it was just the shadow boxes. And when they added the animated part, I uh, definitely had to scoop these guys up. So the last thing you see before you actually enter the main game room is this. Um, this is actually a, a pin board that my, uh, my wife made for me. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, she and I are big Disney nuts and I love these enamel pins. So Disney is kind of known for their enamel pins. So these are all the ones that are specifically mine. And you'll notice I have some pins on here that aren't specifically Disney pins. Um, like uh, these are for uh, SGDQ, you know, the summer games done quick, and then GDQ. Uh, also, I have some hard rock pins. These actually are for my dad. He collects them, so I'm kind of holding on to them. 
but these are really cool. These are from the Console Kingdom line that um, Disney came out with recently, where they took like Goof Troop and other old games and kind of made these console pins for them, and like kind of the Tiger Electronics. So we got Gummy Bears and Tailspin. But uh, and then they also did some Kingdom Hearts pins that were special for when the game's released. So like I said, this is the this is the last thing that's. Not fully game related, but uh, you know, other than that, let's uh, go ahead and jump right into the game room. So this is the overview of my game room. As you can see, I try to keep everything pretty organized. Uh, I've even done certain things where I've created custom cases and custom spacing and shelves to make sure everything is really easy to get to and really easy to find, which is really helpful, especially because as of recording this video, I currently have 67 different consoles and over a thousand games. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get into showing some of the stuff up close. So this is Pippin's part of the game room. He uh, is always sleeping in this chair when I'm editing. In fact, usually I'm editing over here on the, uh, on the couch and he will jump from the back of the couch, much like a cat, right into here, and this is his stuffed bear, it's real soft, and his duck, and he always has to have it kind of specific for him. So this is, this is Pippin's little home, and uh, this is where he spends most of the time in the game room. So this is actually the first game shelf I ever had. Um, you'll see in the future I ended up switching to Ikea because this was so hard to make, but you can see it's very specific. So I made this shelf with a good friend of mine when I lived in Texas, and we made all the sizes specific to what game was in that area. Now, like I said earlier, I really like to keep my stuff organized. So up here I have all my Longbox, uh, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, and Longbox PlayStation games. On the very top I have a rental case Virtual Boy and the box from a Famicom Disk System. Uh, the Castlevania soundtrack record actually I got from a good friend of mine in Annapolis uh, at Kachunk Records. Awesome place, you should check it out. Um, that's just one of my one of my mini fight sticks you'll see. But this is a really cool item right here. This is a Japanese Char Gundam GameCube, complete in the box. Um, I, I was thinking about doing a video on it one day, so if that's something you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments. It's kind of a cool thing. And if you want to see a video on anything you see in this video, like I said, please uh, drop something in the comments, let me know. I love uh, doing requests. But uh, that being said, going through these cases, um, I do have some complete in box handheld games. And you'll see those later on. But a lot of these cases I've custom made myself. So as a for instance, this is a, this is a Zelda DX, right? Um, this is a, a case that I got from a company called CustomGameCases.com. And you can put your game in it. It has a spot for the manual. Um, all of the art for all of these custom cases comes from a website called The Cover Project. The community is awesome there. You've got to check out The Cover Project if this interests you. Um, and another cool thing is Neo Geo Pocket Color cases are uh, made from the DS cases that hold the Game Boy Advance slot, but you just dribble out the bottom and they fit in perfect. So all of the Game Boy Advance games um, are those cases. The Neo Geo Pocket games are those cases, but altered. And of course you have DS and 3DS. Uh, my PlayStation collection, this is where I keep my cream of the crop PlayStation games. I have extra PlayStation games in a case uh, later on, but I mean this is all the big heavy hitters. All my favorite games are here. Mega Man Legends 1, 2, Misadventures of Tron Bond. Uh, specifically, um, this is a game, this isn't an official game, but as we all know, Mega Man Legends 3 got cancelled and a fan group made a Japanese uh, copy, physical copy of like an 8-bit version of the experimental prototype that never came out. I bought two of these, one for me and one for a friend of mine. I've actually never seen them again, so I, you know, I guess this is just one of those weird impossible things. It's not official, so it's not like, you know, this is rare from Capcom, but it's just a really cool thing. Um, and then going down to my Super Nintendo collection, uh, these are all the same thing, the custom cases with the custom art. Um, these are actually called Universal Game Cases. You can get them online. They can store Sega games this way, Super Nintendo that way, NES if you drum out a couple tabs. Uh, I've made all these cases myself. <clears throat> now, one thing that people ask me when they, when they see my shelf 
is, you know, a lot of these games make sense, right? You, know, you got Breath of Fire, you got Chrono Trigger, the Donkey Kong Country. But, like, why do I have a game like Beavis and Butthead? Like, why did I go out of my way to make a case for this? Or, like, why did I go out of my way to make a case for uh, Shaq Fu? <laughs> so, when I was growing up, a lot of my video games came from yard sales and flea markets. Uh, you know, I, I had new games too, of course, but the majority of my games came from, from places like that. So, you, you know, you got what you got. So all the games I grew up with, I included in my custom cases. Now I have more games a little further down, but that's why I have games like Empire Strikes Back and Plock. You know, games that <laughs> no one would really waste their time making a custom case for. But some other cool notable games on here is I have a couple reproductions, like Bahamut Lagoon, as you know, was a PAL game. And uh, also another really cool one is um, Secret of Mana 2, or now as we're calling it, Trials of Mana, which is, can't wait till that comes out. But this is a reproduction game, and uh, of course I made a case for it to go with the other ones. But uh, I just have a few, I don't have many reproduction games, but mainly the reproduction games I have are games that you could not get here. Um, if, if you could get it in America and it's on this shelf, it's legit. <laughs> it's a legit one. Um, some other things I did that are a little bit different than the norm is I'm a huge Mega Man fan. So I have Mega Man 1 through 6 on NES. And rather than use the classic box art like I did for all the other games, I got these custom ones where they all line up to spell Mega Man. And if you see the colors here, <clears throat> there actually has a significance. If you played the Mega Man games on the Famicom, each one of them is a different color. So Mega Man 1 was blue, and then pink, green, yellow, orange, and dark purple. And so they actually made the cases to reflect the original colors. I thought that was awesome when I did it. Uh, of course, going a little bit further, we have um, my... I have just a few Nintendo 64 games, because most of my Nintendo 64 games are a little bit lower. And then go right into PS2, and then from PS2 right into the Xbox 360. Um, I mainly had that generation, PS3, Xbox 360, I mainly had a 360, so that's why I have so many 360 games. But if you go a little bit lower, <clears throat> I'm sure you guys have seen these in collections before, but they're like the video game drawers, and I have a ton of Nintendo 64 games in here. I have um, some Sega Genesis games and just odds and ends in this one. And move the old Buster Sword a little bit. This one is probably my favorite one because the front looks like a Super Nintendo cartridge. But I have a few Super Nintendo games in here, including one more reproduction, and this is a Zelda game. It's actually, it's really heavy. Um, but this Zelda game actually has Parallel Worlds and Goddess of Wisdom, which are two ROM hacks, but also has a B BS Zelda, which if you know is the, is the satellite, the Teleview uh, game, and it's all four parts in this one cartridge. So that's a really neat one. Um, I didn't make a case for it because I don't even think they have a case on the cover project for that. But like I said, uh, if there's any game on here you want me to check out or maybe do a review or a video on, let me know because there's some really cool stuff here. I have some really rare Super Nintendo games. I have some really rare Saturn games. Uh, one of which is, of course, Panzer Dragoon Saga is not an easy to find game. Um, and I have some pretty cool Sega CD games too. So uh, anyway, this is, this is the first shelf I ever made, like I said. And uh, it's uh, our first stop on the game room tour. So, if you haven't watched my channel in the last week when I made my 400 subscriber video, I did a full video on my Neo Geo Arcade cabinet. Uh, please go watch it. It was a really fun video to make, and uh, if you can tell by the thumbnail, I had a lot of fun making it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not really not much to say about this. This is my first and only arcade machine. I did a lot of stuff to it to bring it up to the way it looks now, and it's one of my favorite parts of my collection. So these two shelves may seem like very minor shelves and like not important, but actually they're functionally the most important shelves probably in the game room. I have wireless back speakers for my 5.1 surround sound that I have rigged into everything. I've kind of tried to hide them up here. You can actually see the cord here, but this is where my, my back speakers are for when I'm watching movies or playing games with friends on the HD TV. But, you know, also some of the stuff on them is pretty cool, too. So I have the two limited edition uh, Jones sodas from, um, I got the Nuka-Cola Quantum and the uh, the Mega Elixir from Final Fantasy XV. 
a few random amiibos. Um, one thing you'll see as you check out my collection with my amiibos is I pretty much don't collect all of them. I just collect ones for games I really like. Uh, the next shelf down, this is kind of like my Neo Geo shelf. I have my copy of Windjammers, best game ever made. Check out my, uh, my little mini review on that in the Neo Geo episode. But I also have the limited run Neo Geo box style PS4 games. Um, a Neo Geo X uh, cartridge. Uh, this is actually the Mega Pack, which is every game that ever came out for it. A couple other MDS cartridges and the Neo Geo Mini. Um, of course, some more Amiibos. Uh, Rob the Robot. I actually got this Rob the Robot from a good friend of mine. Gave it to me for free, which is awesome. And then just further down the shelf, I have the Dragon Quest PlayStation Slime Controller. Uh, it's actually sealed, which is a bummer, because usually I open sealed stuff and I'm going to play it. But it's such a weird box, like I don't want to mess it up. So I'm actually looking for a loose one, because I do want to use that. Um, and then the other shelf over here, uh, we have the only Switch game that's not on my Switch shelf, only because it's kind of a weird size where it takes up a little bit too much room, and that's the, uh, the SNK Heroines Big Box um, from NIS. If you'll see on top, this is one of the wildest controllers I have. It is a Onimusha 3 Katana PS2 controller. Now, this thing is nuts. You actually swing the sword to do the attacks in the game. It has joysticks, all sorts of stuff. So, if you guys want to see a video of me opening that up and maybe trying to play something with it, let me know in the comments, because it's a weird thing. A really strange one. And uh, you'll, you'll notice that a, a theme going down that I kind of have a lot of Zelda amiibos here. Zelda's another one of my really favorite franchises. And um, so those are one of the few sets of amiibos I really go out and after. Uh, the further down, um, only because it's one of the few places I can put it, that Nino Kuni 2 box set, uh, I did the giveaway uh, maybe a week ago. I have an unboxing of this thing. This is an awesome box set. I'm really glad I got it. I'm really glad I got to give one away. That was a really fun thing to do on the channel. And then uh, here at the bottom, just a couple more little things, you know, a light gun and uh, some um, Castlevania amiibos just to round out the shelf. Also, uh, this is where I have some, <clears throat> you know, more of my art. Huge fan. If you've seen my <laughs> holiday video, you know I love love Final Fantasy. For me it'll always be Final Fantasy 2, but Final Fantasy 4. Um, so I have this awesome picture of uh, Kane and Cecil on the uh, Red Wings ship, and then Dark Knight and Paladin and Cecil, and then up there I have a Galaga Marquee. That's one of my uh, favorite arcade games. A friend of mine gave me that marquee for free. I got it framed and, uh, you know, I had to put it above the door and make it look a little nicer up there. So this is my first of three TVs in here, excluding the one in the closet that's not plugged in. Uh, this is a really awesome Trinitron that I picked up from a, um, a Goodwill in Texas. A friend of mine called me and said, hey, you need to go downtown and pick this guy up. We both specifically liked it for the same reason. It has this crazy bezeled glass on the front. It's so cool. And the cool thing also is it has this kind of control access where it has all kinds of settings for picture and sound and just a whole bunch of features that like I would not imagine to be on a TV this old. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Trinitron TV is my personal go-to for my retro consoles. It looks fantastic. Um, for this current TV, all I have hooked up to it is a VCR and a Famicom with a Famicom disc system. As you can see right now, I actually have Metroid playing in it right now. Um, but a weird thing about the Famicom that you may not know, in America, you know, if you're, if you're, I'm 30, so if you're around my age and you hooked up your Super Nintendo, your Nintendo, you'd always have to be on Channel 3 or Channel 4. Now, uh, that's actually um, different in Japan. Their Channel 3 and Channel 4, if you take it and hook it into our TVs is their channels 96 and 97. So this TV can't go to channel 96, 97. As you can see, it's on channel three right now. So what I've done is I hooked up my VCR to it. I ran the Famicom through the VCR and I had the VCR on channel 96. So it works really great and also it's a good way for me to watch my VHS tapes. I have this daisy chained over to my main TV so I can actually pop in my VHS tapes here, but watch it on the regular TV more comfortably. Um, I don't have many Famicom games, but uh, I do like to store them in this uh, beta cassette tape holder. It's really convenient because of the size of them. And it also holds the disc system games pretty good as well. 
So this is a, like I said, my first of three TVs, and um, probably the coolest looking one for sure. So this is my flat screen that I have uh, more modern consoles hooked to. Um, just the whole area in general. Uh, I'm a big fan of old martial arts movies. Um, I love Mystery Science Theater 3000. So if you see on the sides here, I have a, um, the VHS tapes that I watch more regularly. I have a bunch of martial arts films, the cartoon Lord of the Rings, some video game related movies, some Sonic, the Mortal Kombat movie, which is terrible. And over here, of course, I have a lot of Mystery Science Theater 3000 and Mothra, Godzilla, The Amazing Colossal Man, Plan 9 from Outer Space, a bunch of stuff that, if you're into that kind of thing, then movies you'd really enjoy. The posters I have, Master of the Flying Guillotine is maybe one of the best bad martial arts movies ever. And then The Miami Connection, if you haven't seen it, I can't even explain this movie to you, but you need to see it. <clears throat> I also have another uh, marquee that I have framed, this one's Centipede. Uh, my same friend who hooked me up with the Galaga one, Hooked up with the centipede one, I framed them both. But like I said, I have everything here hooked up to this TV. I have my surround sound hooked up to it. The two front speakers are kind of hidden at an angle behind these laser line DHS tapes. And then of course the center speaker. My Wii sensor bar for the Wii, and I also have it hooked into the Wii U. I have an Xbox One, I have a Wii, a Wii U, an Xbox 360, a PS3, which is currently playing Mega Man Legends. And this, which is a Neo Geo X. A lot of people probably haven't heard of the Neo Geo X. It is a handheld console. It's really like the Switch before the Switch was the Switch, <laughs> if that makes sense. Kind of an older console, but it uses the micro HDMI, and this kind of counts as a docking base for it. And you plug it in, close it up, you can hook in um, the clicky kind of sticks for it. The Neo Geo X was awesome. But there was some weird kind of like, uh, uh, between SNK and the company that made it, they, there was kind of a little kerfuffle, and so they canceled it pretty early on, which is a shame. But the Neo Geo X is really cool and easily hackable too. I haven't done it to mine, but there's actually a huge modding community out for that. The only other thing in this entertainment stand that I have not talked about is I have a Laserdisc player, because later on you'll see uh, in some of my movies that I actually have quite a big collection of Laserdiscs. And uh, for those of you who don't know what a laser disc is, well, I'll show you later on. But basically, imagine a DVD that's as big as a record. So like I said, this is the TV I use when I'm watching movies with friends and when I'm uh, playing my more modern stuff. I can patch my old stuff into it, but there's a pretty bad delay, something I'm working on right now. But other than that, this TV is also my main monitor for when I'm editing the episodes of the show. So every episode has run through this TV so far, and uh, it's definitely... Uh, one of the best, most used things in my game room. So here is my other Trantron. This is the one that I have all of my retro consoles hooked up to. I actually have a switcher right here. I've made custom labels for it that has really easy to find, you know, which button does what to switch to what console you want to play. Um, as you can tell, uh, this thing is big, very heavy. Uh, once again, I got this in Texas at a Goodwill, go figure is a funny story with this one though they had two of them that were this big and they were getting rid of them for free i mean you know usually goodwill is trying to do something but they were too big no one wanted them so they set them outside and said take them had a friend come with a truck loaded them both up he got one i got one i've been using it ever since it's an amazing tv i mean it makes my old consoles look fantastic this is a new addition to the game room uh, i've kind of said it a few times in recent videos i've actually been doing a lot of stuff in here to actually get it ready for this video. There's stuff I've been meaning to do and I finally got around to it. So I built this shelf that holds all my consoles that are hooked to this right now. I have the Sega Castle, which is of course a Genesis 32X and Sega CD. Uh, my Black Sports Dreamcast. I said in my Dreamcast video, which if you haven't seen that, you should check it out, that this was not working. I learned how to adjust the calibration and boom, now it is working. Now the reason I have the black one up here rather than the white one, it kind of matches a little better. Um, I, you saw the white one on the other shelf earlier. It's fine, they both work great, but I just kind of wanted to have one that matched a little better. I have my Sega Saturn and I have the uh, Memory Card Plus in it, which if you don't know, if you have a Sega Saturn with a Memory Card Plus in it, you can actually bypass the region locking. So that's how I play all of my import games and of course my regular games as well. Uh, my PS2 for my PS2 and PS1. 
uh, my NES, my Super Nintendo, my Grape Nintendo 64, Halo Edition, Xbox, and my Black GameCube with the Game Boy Player and four Wave Birds. Um, this is a really fun time when we're playing, uh, you know, stuff like uh, just all the party games like WarriorWare and all that. The only other thing I have up here is um, I have the Genesis Minis on display with this uh, PlayStation Classic uh, display I got at a convention. And I have another one of those game drawers, but this one is for PlayStation, PlayStation games. So it's pretty cool. It has a little spot for memory cards as well. Um, but yeah, the, uh, a lot of these consoles used to be under in this display cabinet, but now that I've moved everything here, I can put my computer over here, which I use for editing. Uh, and as you can see, it is a piece of junk. It's a uh, Dell, what is this? Dell Precision, whatever the heck that means. Basically, it's a computer I got for free that has been cobbled together to be just powerful enough to edit these videos and nothing else. Uh, that being said, the next big upgrade I'm going to make to the channel eventually is getting a new computer. It's not something I really want to do because, you know, I kind of have always associated a, a really powerful computer with like computer gaming, which doesn't really interest me that much. As you can tell, I'm kind of more into consoles. Go figure. But um, it's something that I am starting to realize I need, especially when I'm capturing game footage and doing all of this uh, exporting and, and editing for videos. I'll basically make a video and click export and then just go watch a movie or leave the house or go to work because it takes that long to export the dang thing. Uh, the only other thing I have over here is I have this little mini dock, which I've shown in an old episode before, but it's a little mini dock that I can plug my Switch into. I have it daisy chained to this TV, but the reason it's over here is it's also hooked into the computer so I can easily record my Switch gameplay for when I'm making videos. But this is, like I said, the last uh, kind of TV area of my game room. And this is a dream when it comes to these older consoles. So this is my kind of controller and a little bit of a movie closet. As you can see, I have organized all my controllers for easy access. I got uh, some cool fight sticks here for the Saturn, the uh, Dreamcast, and PlayStation 1 and 2 in the same port. Um, so my Super Nintendo stuff down there, Nintendo, Sega, PS2, Xbox, gun controllers, and uh, mouse. And of course all my Wii stuff, including like the Wii Gold Nunchuck, which was like exclusive in Japan um, originally. I don't know if that's still the case or not. All my Dreamcast stuff's up here. Um, I have some VHS tapes from Disney and other weird movies. Uh, over here I have that chainsaw controller where I did the pickups video. Um, a couple of cool 8-bit dough and retro bit controllers for Sega consoles. Uh, fight stick for the Wii, some uh, Neo Geo Mini stuff. And this shelf here is a very special shelf to me. I have my not complete but very full Mystery Science Theater 3000 collection. And at the bottom I have all of my laser discs that I talked about earlier. Um, these movies are great. I love Mystery Science Theater 3000. If you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. It's fantastic. But like I said, this is just kind of my uh, my my controller closet. It's an easy place to grab everything. Uh, it's a very functional space. And uh, of course, like everywhere else, I have posters. This one happens to be mainly Mega Man related. I got some Battle Network here. Uh, Mega Man Legends 3 um, promo that was only at a Comic-Con in New York. And uh, a Mega Man 8 picture that a good friend of mine sent. So, um, like I said, this is kind of the controller closet, and uh, it's a cool spot to uh, get your controllers in. Um. <laughs> so this shelf is another new addition to my collection. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll notice that behind me, more and more collector's edition Switch games are just kind of filling up my shelves, covering up games, making it horrible. And I, I got to realize, after, especially after doing this, uh, this getting everything ready for this video, I actually have 68 Switch games, which, like, I could not believe it when I counted them. So a lot of these are, of course, collector's editions. I love limited run games. I love NIS. I love all this cool, these big box games that are coming out. So um, starting from the top, uh, yeah, I've actually I've done an unboxing videos and reviews for this Orbital Edition of Damon X Machina. That was the European exclusive. The European exclusive Link's Awakening. I have it in my Zelda video. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, it's the big box version. 
Um, and then going down, I have Freedom Planet, which I also did a video on that one. Uh, the Gunvolt Chronicles uh, Luminous Avenger 9, I did a video on that one as well, and the uh, Lapis Cross Labyrinth. Uh, Momodora, I actually did a video, an unboxing, and a gameplay review of that game, and a lot of people missed it because I snuck it into my Halloween Horathon, so if you did want to see that, it's in there. Now, I've not done videos for all these games, and some I haven't got to, and some I just, you know, I had before I started the channel, so... Two of the games I definitely haven't done reviews on are Sonic Mania Plus and Ukulele, because I got those well before I started the channel. Um, and then also, actually down here, the Shantae, Half Genie Hero, um, Axiom Verge, and Shining Resonance Refrain, I had that before the channel as well. That being said, any game on here that you want me to do a cool unboxing or a video or a review on, please drop it in the comments. I'm definitely willing to do that, especially because it, it would get me to to jump back into some of these, which I may not have played in a while. Um, this is madness. When I actually set all my Switch games out, I could not believe how many Switch games I had. Um, and like I said, a lot of these games I've done reviews on already on the channel, but uh, you know, there's there's some weird stuff in here that I've had imported, just other weird kind of games. Um, one more shelf down, we have the Mega Man 11 Switch version. It has the special amiibo, the uh, Mega Man box set for Switch. There was a Japanese import. I did a video on that one. Pretty awesome. I actually did a poll uh, in two videos ago about these two, the Psycho Alpha and Bravo. I've not opened them yet. I'm actually going to be making the videos on that soon, so be on the lookout. I'm going to have a part one and a part two. The people have spoken. Um, the Hollow Knight Collector's Edition, uh, the American version of Link's Awakening, which uh, is also in my European Link's. I did an unboxing of both of them, just so you can kind of see both. This is a very recent uh, edition. When I made my Neo Geo uh, episode and I talked about Windjammers, I actually have Windjammers on the Switch, the one you can just buy in the store. And I got to thinking about it, and I kept waffling back and forth on if I was going to get the big box version. I found a really good deal on one. I was like, okay, sure. So I went ahead and ordered it because I love Windjammers. And I did not realize how big this this thing is. I mean, this thing is massive. But it makes sense because there's a frisbee inside of it. Uh, once again, it's sealed right now. I'm not saying that I'm not going to open it. But, you know, um, I have my playable copy. But if that's something you guys want to see, let me know. I'll open it up. We'll check it out on the channel. And then, of course, Ring Fit Adventure, right? Everyone loves that game. Uh, going down a little bit further, Octopath Traveler, the Wayfarer Edition, which this is a really, really cool collector, collector's edition. Um, the limited run, big box version of Night Trap. This game, if you've never played Night Trap, it's horrible. It's not in the, in the least bit fun. But the reason I got this game was way back in the 90s, there's a lot of dispute over regulating video games with violence and Mortal Kombat and all sorts of stuff. And the then president of Nintendo America said in Congress, Night Trap will never be on a Nintendo console. And when I saw that it was coming for the Switch via limited run, I knew like I had to buy that because it's like history. It's, you know, it's like being proven wrong. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Ease 8, which is an awesome collector's edition that I got from NIS. And the SNK 40th Anniversary, another cool NIS game, like I said. I had both of these games before I started the channel, along with, actually I had all four of these games, well before I started the channel. If you guys want to see these games in action, let me know, because they're really cool and the stuff inside of them is really awesome. Uh, a little bit further down, Starlink, because I got it for $5 and it had an R-Wing. Um, the box for my Super Nintendo Classic and NES Classic. And a few more choice Amiibos. Um, there really is no rhyme and reason, or reason why I have these Amiibos on here, rather than on the shelf or vice versa. I just, you know, I, I just ended up picking these ones for the shelf. But, like I said, this is my Switch shelf. Um, I have the little LEDs going, kind of pulsing different colors. Kind of brings the room a little bit of, of uh, color back here. And the cool thing is, is right now it looks pretty full, but there's plenty of room for more Switch games. And this collection is probably my fastest growing part of my game collection right now. So this should be the most familiar area for anyone watching my videos because this is where I record all my intros and outros, um, although I'm sitting much lower. As you can tell, uh, and I'm not a very tall person, but you know I'm usually down here when you guys are seeing me because of the, uh, the drum stool I'm using. But this is my main 
uh, kind of game shelf for all my kind of weird collectibles, weird games, cool stuff that uh, kind of blends together. So each shelf typically has kind of a design to it and, uh, and a purpose. Some of them don't, but uh, we're just going to kind of go through them. So starting over here, these are all like sorts of weird big box um, collector's editions that I've gotten. Uh, this one's particularly cool. It's the Japanese big box version of Cyberbots, which is a fighting game from Capcom that uh, until that weird Capcom arcade stick comes out, the only way to have been able to play this game before now is to import it on the Saturn. Uh, behind that, I have Bravely Default and Bravely Second, which are two of my favorite RPGs. I'm so glad that Bravely Default 2 is coming out this year. This thing is really cool. This is an Onimusha 3 Hori memory card with like a tassel like charm on it. Really cool thing. I don't even remember where I got this. I just remember seeing it somewhere and being like, wow, that's a, that's a weird thing. So I scooped that up. Uh, another 3DS game, Legend of Legacy, which is kind of like a Chrono Trigger type game. And this was a recent pickup. It is uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. Uh, the only problem with these big box collector's editions, just like on the on the uh, Switch shelf, is they're so big, it's like to get them all up there, they end up covering each other sometimes. Uh, going over, I have two Sonic statues. This is from the original collector's edition of Sonic Mania, which if you don't know, if you flip on the on switch, which is right here. Sega! Yeah, it says Sega. It's really, really super neat. And uh, this is just a little statue I got at GameStop when they were on clearance. I usually don't buy statues like that, but um, I mean, I think it was like three dollars, so I couldn't really pass it up. Uh, continuing on, I have a bunch of weird, uh, a weird controller and a bunch of light guns. So I have the virtual gun for my uh, um, Sega Saturn. That's the imported one. I have a Lethal Enforcers, the Enforcer for the Sega Genesis, uh, the GunCon 2 for the PS2, and the Japanese Twin Stick for the Saturn. It works for Virtual On. It actually works for like three games, but one game not on that list that works really well with the twin sticks is actually um, the Panzer Dragoon Saga. It's very strange that that works so well, but it does. <clears throat> Continuing down, these are some really large real estate taking games. But I have the Pit Boy edition um, of Fallout. I have the Mighty Number no. Nine collector set. I know a lot of people did not like Mighty Number no. Nine. Um, I did like it. I didn't support the Kickstarter. I didn't like it in the sense of like this was the Mega Man successor I wanted, but just as a game that was pretty cheap, uh, I thought it was pretty fun, and I did beat it all the way, so that's saying something. And then the uh, Sekiro um, Shadows Die Twice Collector's Edition, I did an unboxing of that very recently. I picked that up from a pawn store. Pretty cool. Uh, so going one more shelf down, starting back on the other side. Um, this is kind of my dot hack area, and you will see that I love dot hack. I have on the PS2 dot hack uh, GU Volume One, Two, and Three, the dot hack GU Collection on PS4, the Japanese exclusive um, uh, chipboard box version dot hack Link for uh, the PSP, and I have the Blu-ray version, which there's a Blu-ray version and a DVD version. Dot Hack Fragment, which is the PlayStation um, 2 online version, uh, a figure, and this is a very cool part of my Dot Hack collection. So, in Japan, they had a box set where you could get and hold all of your games in it, and it had another thing called Dot Hack Gift. Now, this set did not exist here in America, so I have all four games, which are pretty hard to get. All together on their own but I was able to find just the box and the gift only usually people try to sell it with the Japanese versions of the games but so this is kind of what it looks like from every side but I got to get it and put my games in it so it's like a weird kind of hybrid set of the Japanese and the American set but it's really cool um, I mean I think it's the best part of my dot hat collection um, but on top of that I actually have the soundtracks which are right next to it here. Ooh, sorry, hard to slide these guys in. The soundtracks and then another one of the soundtracks here. So the Perfect Collection music soundtrack. And another thing that I have, dot hack related, Ooh, get that back up, is the Hori memory card for dot hack GU. It's really cool, uh, just another weird thing that you don't really see often. 
Um, other stuff on this shelf, though, like it's kind of dot hack over here, and then just weird kind of eclectic stuff over here. So I have the Sonic Adventure uh, 2 10th Anniversary Japan Exclusive box set. I did an open an unboxing of that in my Dreamcast video, so check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I got Pokemon Soul Silver complete in box. Picked this up from a yard sale for five dollars. Actually, I have that in one of my pickup videos. Um, Hyper Light Drifter, the uh, the collector's edition. Um, Dragon Warrior 1, 2, and 3, and this one's 4, I just don't have the box for it. I have all the paperwork, but just not the box. Um, some really cool DS games that are complete. Solo to Robo is actually a spiritual successor to the PS1 game Tale Concerto. Um, if you haven't played either of those, you should, they're great. But the DS version was really cool because it just came with a soundtrack inherently. Um, also, I have Rodea the Sky Soldier and uh, Knights of the Nightmare, kind of the big box DS games. Uh, further down, I have a boxed copy of uh, Conker's uh, Bad Fur Day, Donkey Kong Country 64, um, a couple various boxed NES games, just Castle Quest, Kirby's Adventure, and uh, Section Z. This is the, um, I don't want to pull it out because it might knock down Jack Brothers, but this is the collector's edition of uh, Guilty Gear x or er, I guess it's his X Erd, I guess. A really great fighting game on the PS4. Um, and then, of course, a Japanese copy of Jack Brothers, because the American copy is very expensive, but it is complete in box, so it's kind of nice to have for my Virtual Boy collection. So, the next shelf over, I have these three games. I have them still sealed. They're these 30th anniversary games. They're the Legacy Cartridge Collection that came out a little while ago. They're all limited in number. Uh, the Street Fighter ones, they only did 5,500. Um, it's for Street Fighter 2. That Mega Man 2, they did 8,500, and Mega Man X, they did 8,500. And the weird thing with all three of these was uh, when you got them, I think it was one in five as a color variant. So you don't know unless you open it. But I'm keeping them sealed because I have all these games on their proper original copies, but they are playable on original hardware. They're pretty cool. Uh, since they've come out with these, they've actually done another one. I believe it was Earthworm Gem. Um, other than that, the only other thing this shelf has is a couple of old Disney uh, comics and weird space stuff that's now been covered up by these cartridges. And this game, Unholy Night, it's a new Super Nintendo game. I think I actually got it on Amazon, pretty cheap. Uh, it's a cool game, but I do believe if you've played it, that game is a little bit too hard to like for the console to handle. The game itself is, is, is cool. But, uh, I mean, it's it's almost like Guilty Gear quality on Super Nintendo, and the Super Nintendo just struggles to play it, which is a shame. Uh, the next shelf over, I've actually panned over before in my Final Fantasy um, 2 video, or Final Fantasy 4, uh, if you're outside of the States. But uh, just a quick little recap of this shelf, I have um, the Collector's Edition of Final Fantasy X uh, 10, 10, 10, 2, for the PS4 and the PS3 in the back. The... Um, the Bring Arts action figure for Kingdom Hearts Cloud, uh, my complete box for Final Fantasy II, Final Fantasy Explorers, a little Paladin Cecil, a Squall and Titus, and then all of my different Final Fantasy IV stuff. Like I said, if you are interested in checking that out, I did do a video on all of my different versions of Final Fantasy II, IV, that's a bunch of them. But over here I have all my PlayStation versions. We have uh, Origins, Chronicles, Anthology, Tactics, and then uh, 7, 8, and 9, and my 7 is a floating I-7, which I don't know if that matters anymore, but at one point it did. And then I have the actual boxes for all of the Game Boy Advance versions, which is Tactics, the 1 and 2 2-pack, two uh, the 4, and 5 and 6. Um, so those are actually pretty good ports, in my opinion. Um, although my favorite way to play 4, like I said in the uh, video, is uh, definitely the PSP version, especially because you can actually... Uh, using a PSP model 2 or 3 continue on your TV and play them. Um, going back down another shelf we have this eclectic monster of a shelf. Bunch of weird stuff in here. So we have the Haseo figure that comes with the limited edition of Dot Hack GU Volume 1. Um, a couple of boxed Game Boy games behind it, a couple of Mega Mans, a couple of Battle Networks, some Game Gear games, Sonic Drift, uh, the Ray Earth games, and a couple other little Game Gear games. My only boxed copy of a Neo Geo Pocket game, and that's uh, Biomotor Unitron, which is kind of like a combination of like Metabots before Metabots existed, and Pokemon, if that makes sense. I have this cool guy here, 
which is the Super Mario World video game watch with the headphones and the box and the uh, the paperwork for it and the certificate of authenticity as well. Um, I just like kind of like having this open on display. I think it looks a little nicer. Uh, if you guys have watched any of my unboxing videos, which I hope you have, you'll note the power glove, which does work, and I have the sensor behind it. Um, I have this laser line case with a bunch of uh, NES games uh, that, that aren't on the shelf over there, just some loose ones to kind of fill the case out. Um, another weird thing I have is this electrode card. Like, why would I have an electrode Pokemon card in a frame? Fun story behind this card. Um, when I was growing up and Pokemon became the craze when I was in elementary school, I got a booster pack. It was the first Pokemon card thing I ever got. And if you don't know, the booster packs have one rare card in it, a couple uncommons, and a couple commons. And the rare card could be holographic, could be non-holographic, you never know. So I opened up my booster pack and it was my rare card was Electrode. Uh, specifically this Electrode. Now, <laughs> I was in a, um, I was in a, uh, as at school, and I was on the bus riding it, and I was playing Pokemon on my Game Boy, and I named, like, my, uh, my, my rival, like, a curse word, which, you know, in elementary school, you don't say curse words, and I named him, like, a curse word, and my, my friend, who was sitting next to me on the bus, like, saw it, and he was like, oh, I'm gonna tell on you, and, you know, me being a little kid, I'm like, yeah, I could've obviously just turned it off and been like, what are you talking about, but... He's like, oh, I'm going to tell on you unless you give me your rare card. And I only had seven cards, a booster pack worth. So I had to give him my Electro card, right? Fast forward to like way after college. You know, we're all adults now. And uh, I was playing some online game with a friend. And then that kid, who's now an adult, got on the game with us. I hadn't talked to him in years and years and years. And just through playing the game, you know, laughing, catching up, I ended up telling him that story. And he was like, hey, when are the next, when's the next time you're going to be back in Florida, which is where I'm originally from? And uh, I, you know, I told him, and so he's like, oh, we should meet up and get lunch. But when I met up with him, he brought the Electro card. He actually had had it in his collection of cards. So he brought that card, and then my wife ended up buying a little frame for it. So that's why I have an Electro card, especially such an ugly one in the frame. Kind of weird. But uh, anyway... Moving on to the next shelf, I have a bunch of handhelds. Now, with these handhelds, I get these cool stands from uh, Rose Colored Gaming. Um, so I have a Zelda one for the Zelda DS. I have a uh, Famicom one for the Famicom uh, Game Boy Micro. Don't mind the Destiny Ghost. Uh, Destiny's not that great of a game, but you know, at one point I played it for way too many hours, so it does have a spot in my heart. Um, Game Boy printer, a couple of Game Boy pockets, a Game Boy uh, camera. This is a Super Famicom version of a um, of a Game Boy Advance. Uh, it's a reshell uh, that I did myself. Uh, this was a pink one at one point, and I got this cool custom shell and went ahead and kind of tricked it out. Um, looks like Yoshi's Island's in it. <clears throat> Another cool thing on this shelf is it was a gift from a friend of mine. And that is a original Welcome to the Next Level Sega pin. Um, I would have this on my pin board over there, but I just feel like this thing's kind of needs to be over here with the video games. Another thing I forgot to show off from the last shelf is, and this may not look like anything, it's just a, like a wristband um, that says Nintendo on it. But if you remember a few years ago, they brought back the Nintendo World Championships. And that was the wristband they had in all of us. Um, they only had it in like eight or nine states. And one of the places you could go was Dallas. And I happened to be living two hours away. So I went and competed in that. Of course, I didn't go anywhere because those guys were crazy. But it's still kind of a cool thing. Uh, now, if you've watched my Dreamcast uh, video, you've seen this shelf already. Um, I have my Laserline Dreamcast uh, case that kind of custom Frankenstein. It has all my Dreamcast games. I go in detail showing exactly all of my Dreamcast stuff. You should check out that video. It might have been like 200 subs or something like that. Um, I have a bunch of the old Sonic figures from uh, McDonald's and some memory cards. And then over here I have my imported Saturn games. Uh, obviously you can tell exactly what they are because we can all read Japanese. But there's some cool games here. Um, you know, If you guys want to see a video on maybe my imported Saturn set, let me know. It's kind of a kind of cool um there's some there's some really good games that never made it out of japan and like i said earlier with the memory card plus you can play them easily on your sega saturn um 
I also have an original, uh, this is not, they actually just remade these, but this is an original one from the 90s, um, Tamagotchi uh, Digivice for Digimon, before the show, before all that, so that's kind of a neat thing that I've kept for quite a while. So continuing on, this is my working design shelf. I've done a whole video on this, uh, so definitely check that out because it's, it's pretty long. I really go in depth a lot more, but uh, just so you know, I pretty much have everything working design related from the Sega CD and up, including this new promo, which I have in a pickups video. So to my knowledge, the only thing I'm actually missing is the Turbo Graphics games. Hopefully one day I'll get those, but I'm not really holding my breath. Um, Moving on here to the middle, I have a couple more handhelds that are pretty cool. Um, this is the Game Boy Horror that I modded myself with a backlit screen shell mod and the Game Boy Horror glass. Uh, Pokemon Blue is in it. Um, and I have a Game Boy Horror stand. A couple of Game Boy SPs. This is the Gundam Char one. It actually matches the uh, GameCube that I showed earlier. And this is the NES one. Um, <clears throat> I also have a Tail Concerto soundtrack and Japanese guidebook. A Nintendo Power signed by Captain Nintendo, like B Captain M, which is really cool. And uh, behind that is a um, uh, framed, you can't really see it, but it's a framed record for uh, Panzer Dragoon. Um, so that's pretty neat too. Continuing on, I have my Mega Man shelf. Now, I believe I have panned over the shelf before in the past, but uh, just a quick quick go over there's not really much in the in the uh, world of games over here it's mostly figures and stuff but I have pretty much every one of the um, uh, the little 66 figures they had a bunch of them um, they got X and, and Battle Network and um, some of the bad guys cut man and all that uh, I also have a bunch of these uh, four inch Nell figures I have um, uh, Mega Man uh, Dash or Volnut, like for Mega Man Legends, Star Force, I have uh, Battle Network, and then the Dark Battle Network I actually have out of the box. Um, I have the Legacy Collection on 3DS, big box version. I have a original uh, Mega Man X box and everything. Uh, I showed this in a pickups video, but this is actually one of the harder to find games I have Mega Man related. This is um, the Power Fighters for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, Japanese exclusive have it complete and uh, this is another really cool handheld um, this is actually a Game Boy Advance it's really really rough but I've never seen another one but it's a Game Boy Advance 4 Mega Man Battle Network um, actually I had this imported from Australia but I believe it was Japanese exclusive moving on now we just get to just a bunch more regular just game shelves so this is my um, GameCube collection. It's not very large, but the games themselves are all pretty good. Uh, I have a, a bunch of, I pretty much like the main games you're gonna want. Uh, a couple standouts. I mean, Gotcha Force is a really heavy hitter, but but you know everyone likes Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, uh, all the Sonics, of course, all the Zeldas. Zoids is an awesome co-op game if you've never played it, and WarioWare Inc. is one of the few games that. All my friends play when we come over, especially with the Wave Birds. It's really fun. Um, my Wii U collection is quite small, but it's basically, you know, the Zeldas, Mario Party, Wonderful 101, and Xenoblade Chronicles X. I have two copies of that for some reason. <laughs> uh, my Wii collection also quite small, but once again, it's all games that I really enjoy playing. So it's not like I have any filler here. Um, but I have the Zeldas, Knights, all the Sonics. Uh, the Mario Galaxies, you know, Xenoblade, Last Story, Mario Kart, the uh, the Wii um, Kirby Dream Collection, and the Mario All-Stars Collection. And I roll straight into my Xbox games. Um, <clears throat> Blinks 1 and 2 are some cool games that if you haven't played them, you gotta check them out. Jet Set Radio Future, one of my favorite games of all time, period, point blank. Uh, I do have Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, which is kind of a hard game to get, but if you love... Um, you know, like the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon or SimCity type games, uh, and you like Jurassic Park, that's a game you have to check out. Otogi 1 and 2 are some awesome games that a lot of people slept on. It's, it's, they're kind of like, imagine uh, just a different Devil May Cry, and they're fantastic. Worth checking out, definitely. Wrapping up my Xbox games, I just have, you know, some Panzer Dragoon, some Fantasy Star, uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. 
Capcom vs. SNK SVC Chaos, uh, Shinmu 2, and uh, I actually have another copy of Jet Set Radio Future, but this is the Sega GT 2002 Jet Set Radio Future 2 pack. The reason this one stands out, it's not like expensive or rare or anything, but for some reason that is the only one that's backwards compatible on the Xbox 360, so if you wanted to play Jet Set Radio Future on the 360, that's the one you gotta have. <clears throat> Going straight from there, we go into the Xbox One games. So I have the big box version of Destiny 2. Uh, gosh, I hate that game. I hate that series. I played it so much, but I just, uh, oof, it uh, wore on me in the wrong kind of way. But I do have the Kingdom Hearts. Uh, a couple steel books here, some Fallout 76s, Bloodstained, Battlefield, uh, Final Fantasy 15, Monster Hunter World. Um, you know, just a bunch of, of, of just Xbox One games I play with friends and stuff. All the Mega Man Legacy collections and all. And uh, a few other games. Um, continuing on now, my one more shelf down, going into my Genesis collection. It's, uh, once again, um, not very, very large, but it's a lot of games I really enjoy. I mean, Aladdin, Alien Soldier is actually a reproduction because that did not come out over here. Um, Castlevania Bloodlines, I did have to make a custom case for that, but that game is fantastic. Um, Mega Man The Wily Wars, uh, this is actually also a reproduction because it did not come out over here in the US, although now you can play it on the Sega um, Mini, so definitely worth checking out. But I do have a copy of like Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, um, of course all the Sonic games, Rocket Knight Adventure, and then uh, <laughs> my 32X collection, all four games. Uh, nothing even really particularly stand out, but you know, uh, the version of Doom has better music I guess than the... Uh, not the Super Nintendo version, but I don't know. It's still a decent 32X game. Um, going back over here, I know we're going this way, but this is the rest of my Xbox One games. Um, you know, just a couple couple decent games. You know, the Street Fighter Collection stands out to me. The Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I mean, these are, you know, the Xbox One is, is a console I play a lot of because that's really what a lot of my friends have. And it's convenient to be able to play games I like while talking with my friends. Um, then we go on to my PS3, PS4, and as you can tell, my collection is quite small there, but these are all games that I have for a specific reason, <laughs> you know, I really enjoy them, so of course the first five games are all Kingdom Hearts. Um, the Monster Hunter Iceborne, this is actually the Steelbook, uh, I wanted that Steelbook really bad, and they only had it for PS4, so what I did was, I have a friend of mine who has the game on PlayStation, I have it on Xbox. I bought the PS4 version, which was a code, so I could have the Steelbook. Gave him the code so he had the game, and he bought the Xbox code and gave it to me. So um, he ended up getting the DLC for free. I ended up getting the Steelbook. So it ended up working out pretty good. Um, <clears throat> got King of Fighters, uh, I guess this is 14. The J Stars Victory is pretty good. Um, the Secret of Mana Collection. Uh, Metal Wolf Chaos, I did a video on that. Very cool. I imported all three of the Earth Defense Force games. EDF is like the most overlooked series, I think, ever <laughs> in video games. If you've not heard of an EDF game, check them out. They're on the 360. A lot of them are backwards compatible on Xbox One, and they're all on PlayStation. Um, you can get uh, you, all these games. I imported them, but you can actually get them on the PlayStation um, Store uh, relatively cheap. Uh, other than that, you know, I got the, the Shadow of Colossus for PS3, 3D Dog Game Hero, and all of the Ratchet and Clanks. Ratchet and Clank is a series that I have always loved um, ever since the PS2 days. Very fun series, very cool to check out. Other than that, over here I have my PSP games. Uh, once again, not many, but uh, you know, I, when I when the PSP was happening, uh, to me personally, I felt like the PSP like had a bunch of cool games, but they're, they were spaced out, so that's why I ended up not really having too many, because I'd buy a game here, and then two, three months later, buy another game. You know, it wasn't like nowadays, where it's like every month there's three good games, like, oh crap, what am I going to do? Um, but still, because of that, it left me with a small collection, but it's a collection of games that I really, really enjoyed. Um, one really standout game on the PSP to me... Um, is of course the Final Fantasy for the After Year, the complete collection, because it, it was the first time I ever got to play the After Years, which is great. Um, <clears throat> that leads me to the very bottom of my shelf. Uh, this is my guidebooks. Um, now, 
too many guidebooks to go over. <laughs> I have uh, a huge, huge love for guidebooks, mainly for the art. Um, I don't really use them for the actual using, uh, like a strategy guide. But um, I have all sorts of guidebooks that I really, really like. But there's one company in particular called Versus Books. And if you've never seen a Versus Book guidebook, check them out. For some reason, they're still like pretty cheap, uh, depending on which one you're getting. But they have great art, and the writers were fantastic for them. But some guidebooks that stand out to me personally, um, I really love the Dot Hat guidebooks. I have all four of them, um, all my Versus books. Uh, down on this end, I have all Zelda from here to here, <laughs> and some Nintendo Powers and stuff. But this is a section of my game room I'm always kind of adding to. The only problem is, is I like to keep everything in alphabetical order. And as you can tell, it's quite packed. And every time I, f I feel like I get a new guidebook, it's usually like something dead metal. So I have to move everything around to get this one book in. Um, luckily, actually, I bought a guidebook today, but it was a W, so I could just slide it right in the back. But um, yeah, so that's it for my final shelf of my game room. So that's it for my 500 subscriber game room tour video. It's been a really fun last couple weeks getting some new stuff built up, getting the game room really kind of built and ready for this uh, video. Um, thanks again everyone who subscribes and likes and comments. It's been so fun making this channel and making all these fun videos for you guys. If there's anything you want to see a specific video or review or unboxing of from this, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Just kind of uh, drop it in there if you want to see me open up something, check out any sort of any sort of games, make a review, or just maybe just some gameplay just for fun. Um, other than that, uh, hey, as always, uh, thanks again for liking and uh, commenting. Uh, like, dislike, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, on the way to a thousand, hopefully soon. And uh, hey, as always.